There's a certain poeticism we associate with photos taken in the rain, whether it's sympathy for someone caught in a downpour, the drama of neon lights dancing off reflections, or the calm after the storm, these photos all have something in common. Undeniable and powerful visual language. I've been photographing street scenes for over a decade, and the rain has produced some of my most striking images. This is because the rain not only adds a unique character to photographs, but it also pushes people to act in different ways. Despite the streets and the forecast oftentimes being unpredictable and out of your control, the combination can be quite volatile and successful. Actually, the theme of my first photo project was on umbrellas, and mostly taken in the rain or snow. At the time, I was using a weather sealed digital Pentax, but have since found that film is a better option when it comes to street photography. The format does present some challenges though when it comes to adverse weather, and it's easy to miss that decisive moment. And while there's various pieces of kit made specifically to protect your gear from the elements, the beauty of film cameras is in their simplicity and ease of use, which makes them great choices for capturing these fleeting moments on the street. So bulking them up or overcomplicating them doesn't really feel like the right solution. Of course, at times it will take extreme measures to capture unique photographs, and while something like this Leica MP is built like a fancy tank, it doesn't always make it the right choice to dig out during a storm. Luckily, there are a few analog options out there that fare better in harsher weather. My favorite analog camera for rainy days is the TLR. Not the most obvious choice at first glance, but they do excel where other cameras quickly become awkward and cumbersome in the rain. The ergonomics of a twin lens camera allows for effortless operation, even while holding an umbrella between your arm or hooked around your wrist. Compared to more conventional cameras with protruding lenses, TLR's low profile and tower-like design also means they're easier to keep dry under said umbrella, and their wastefinder means you can elegantly frame and focus without getting yourself wet. This all makes for a pleasant experience, but really, it's in the results that keeps me coming back to twin lens cameras. There's just a certain quality to 6x6 medium format photos that elevates the already unique look you can expect from photos in the rain. Depending on the model, you might even be able to access the light meter without getting the camera wet, but another reason film cameras can be so enjoyable in the rain is that exposure tends to remain consistent, so generally, you won't have to be changing settings for every photo, except for, say, creative effect. This is a great benefit when it comes to street photography where hyperfocal distance techniques and consistent exposures really simplifies things, allowing you to hone in on framing and timing rather than focus and changing settings. This is actually how I was able to capture some of the early photos used in this video with a rangefinder camera. While normally cumbersome to focus if you're using an umbrella, hyperfocal distance techniques and consistent exposures make just about any camera as simple as a point and shoot. And while rangefinders are smaller than say SLRs, when you do eventually want to focus one of these cameras or change some settings, things can get awkward quickly, so my second recommendation is to use actual point-and-shoot cameras. Most compact cameras are going to be full or semi-automated, making them even easier to use in the rain, but their size also lets you pocket and protect them when not in use. Point-and-shoots are going to be electronic, so rain may become more of a concern, but in the harshest conditions, one could reach for a weatherproof version of these cameras. Something like the Kyocera T-Scope or T-Proof I've talked about in the past are great options that could survive even if you're caught in a downpour without an umbrella. They're also especially equipped with a built-in waste finder, so you get some of the benefits I mentioned from TLRs, but in a much smaller package. One downside to many of these compacts is they tend to go for slower shutter speeds or are quick to insist on flash when it gets even a little bit dark, but when you do learn the specific quirks of your compact camera, it becomes a powerful tool since you can always have it with you. While we can't exactly control what happens on or over the streets, we can certainly take advantage of the occasion when it does rain with cameras like these. Full manual cameras like TLRs and of course many rangefinders or SLRs have little to no electronics and can be extremely well built, so I tend not to worry too much about having a splash here or there on these, but automated cameras like compacts and point and shoots rely heavily on electronics and tend to have a lot more plastic components, so there could be some concern there. Of course, you're free to use any camera you'd like and everyone's risk tolerance with something like this is gonna be a little bit different, but after surviving many rainy seasons here in Japan, I found these two categories in particular perform best. I also recommend taking a lens cloth to wipe down any stray drops, and some dehumidifying silica gel packs for your bag. When you get home, it's also best practice to take the camera out of your bag and wipe it dry if necessary. Again, use your own discretion as to what equipment you choose to take with you in the rain. There's always going to be a risk when you go out to photograph, but more so when you're dealing with harsher weather. Anyways, I hope you found this video interesting or informative, and let me know if you enjoyed it, or if you have any kind of suggestions for photographing with film in different weather conditions. 
Also, I would really appreciate it if you shared this video with other photographers you know, as word of mouth is really the strongest way to build a community. Thank you as always.